So this is a bit of a weird one. The Mars 4 Max is part of Elegoo's new lineup, although it didn't get released with as much fanfare as the new Saturn 3 or Mars 4 line, it actually has more in common with the Mars 3 range than anything to do with any of the Mars 4s. But that doesn't mean it's a bad printer, so let's take a look, because this one's actually quite interesting. So hi, I'm Ross, and this is Farhammer Videos. One of the things I never talk about in reviews is the unboxing, but I've got to hand it to Elegoo lately because the last couple of printers I've had, both this one and the Mars 4 DLP, have actually just slid straight out of the box. They actually load them in there in such a way that you just cut down the top seam, lift the box upright and slide it out. I've had other printers where it's much more cumbersome to try and lift them out the top of a rectangular box, which in this case would be the side. Again, a minor thing, but really convenient for anyone setting up a printer for the first time. But the bit I really want to get into is where this fits in the Mars 4 lineup. Because you've got the Mars 4 9K, the Mars 4 9K Ultra, which has got some extra features, the Mars 4 DLP, which you can see in my other review video, and this is the Mars 4 Max. So you would expect that it's like the Mars 4 Ultra and the Mars 4, but bigger. But unfortunately, because of the resolution, it's slightly lower quality. And that resolution is 5,700 by 3,600 pixels on a 9.1 inch screen. What that really means though is each pixel is only 34 microns in size, very similar to the 35 microns of the Mars 3 and the Mars 3 Pro. The actual mainline Mars 4 and the Mars 4 Ultra have 18 micron pixels. And it's got me scratching my head the way Elegoo have marketed this because if you look at that range of printers and go, well, we've got the baseline Mars 4, the Mars 4 Ultra, and the Mars 4 Max, you would expect that the Max does more than the other two. But that's not the case. This is very much more like the Mars 3 Max than anything to do with the Mars 4s. But does that matter? I mean, I've said many times that once you get below 35 microns, the value in increased resolution is severely depreciated. In fact, unless you're using a specific high detail resin, you probably won't notice a difference. And even if you are using one of those resins, the difference is gonna be incredibly minimal. I feel that a lot of the manufacturers are going after the wrong thing by trying to improve the resolution below what we already have. But as for the rest of it, this is a typical budget Elegoo printer. And I say budget because they do things that the other manufacturers don't in order to reduce the costs of their products. But again, that's not a slight. I'm not saying this or any of Elegoo's products are bad printers. I'm just saying they do things to keep the costs down. And if that's okay with you, then yeah, fine. Go buy one. They're great. But the majority of it is plastic. Even though the housing's got a slight corrugated look to it to make it seem like metal, it's mostly plastic. And on the lid, they've started putting these techie stripe decals on them. Again, it, it adds no value, but it does make it look a little bit prettier and it falls in line with the rest of the Elegoo range. You've got things like the build plate, which unlike other brands isn't laser etched or pretty in any way, it's just sandblasted. But honestly, I have less issues with this than any other printer. I know that those other styles may cause prints to stick more, but in my experience, they often stick too much. With this, prints just slide off, and if you get your baseline exposures right, I've got a video on how to do that, then everything should be fine, and it'll slide off this much better than most other printers. And the printer even comes with one of Elegoo's now pretty much standard carbon filters, which just plugs into the internal USB port. And as Vogue says, don't charge your phone off this, although I might try that one day. And it just plugs into there and it sucks out a lot of the nasty smells and you can get replacement carbon blocks, or as some people have said, just get the carbon filters that you get for fish tanks and stuff that up into the enclosure. It comes with your typical box of stuff, including your masks, gloves, a funnel, some scrapers, and some cards telling you how the printer works. And again, it's all very, very standard Elegoo at this point. And you also get your lovely cheap USB drive, and you get this with all printers. I always say they're rubbish, replace it with a decent one if you can, because the cheap ones can break and cause problems such as the printer not printing or locking up. In this case, mine was fine, but it can happen. One of the things that might not matter to you but bothers me is when they stick a USB port on the side. I like to put things up close to my printers, there's no vents there, so I like my wash and cure stations right up next to my 3D printer. Now in this case, not only have they put the USB port on the side, but they've put the power button and the power socket on the side as well, right at the front. 
And this is to keep costs down so they don't need extension cables inside or to add additional boards. And yeah, it's just annoying. But this may not bother you, so feel free to have a go at me in the comments for having an opinion about this. UI-wise, again, very standard Elegoo affair. The only thing that still gripes me about this is that the print button is on the right-hand side of the front menu rather than the left. But again, that's just a personal thing because I'm British, we read left to right, not right to left. I just feel like that would be a better place for it. I'm not that forced, it just bothers me. But again, all of the other parts of the printer are pretty much where you would expect them. All the menu settings are in settings, and then the information about the printer is in info. Really simple, really straightforward. You don't need any more on a basic printer. It's where you need it to be. It's fully translatable, and even where it is translated, it's done pretty well. Before you start printing anything, make sure you run the exposure tests on the screen because it's much easier to claim you've got a broken printer before you've tried to print something. So just make sure it is actually exposing before you do anything else. If you're doing this yourself though, make sure to wear protective glasses or put paper over the screen. I was wearing protective glasses when filming these shots. Leveling, super simple. All you need to do is loosen off the two bolts with the Allen keys, and I have whinged about these ball joints, but to be honest, I have less problems with them now than I did back in the early days. So if you do prefer something with a tighter joint, then yeah, go for it. These do come loose, but again, when you go through the leveling process I'm about to explain, you'll see how much easier it is to just do it this way and adjust it if necessary. When leveling a printer, a lot of people get hung up about using one sheet of paper, two sheets, make sure you use the included leveling card. But the point of leveling is to make sure you've got an adequate gap for the FEP film at the bottom of your vat. So what I do now to level is just put the vat in and then level it to the FEP film when that's in. Again, crucify me in the comments all you want, but somebody recommended this to me in a comment on one of my videos. And since I've started doing it, I've never had a problem. And those people who've tried off the back of my earlier recommendations have also commented saying, yeah, this is much easier. You can also do it with resin in. It's just messy and you get it all over your hands. Wear gloves. But yeah, just loosen the bolts, send the printer to the zero position. It'll detect the FEP at the bottom of the vat. And then all you need to do is press down on it as you tighten the bolts. Go back to the previous menu, tell it that Z equals zero, and that's it. You've got a leveled printer bed. Now, one thing I'm glad I don't need to go through anymore is how to expose this printer. I have actually done a separate video on that. So if you want the quickest, easiest way to find the best exposure settings for any resin and any printer, I recommend you go and watch that video. I'm going to be referencing it a lot. And using those steps, I managed to get this dialed in. And this is Frozen's 8K resin, which I've used a lot. So I'm going to keep using it just so that my printer reviews are comparable until I find a better high detail resin. And my exposure times using this resin were 1.5 seconds, which is exactly the same as what I used for the Saturn II. That again tells me this is more in line with the previous generation of printers than the new one. And with these settings, my first prints came off a tree. Now, one thing I do want to point out is the resin vat. Now, the resin vat isn't small. You can get probably 500 milliliters of resin in there approximately, but because it's so close at the edge to the build plate, when you get drips from this, it will go on the inside of the cover, which again is just annoying. But speaking of that cover, like with the rest of the Alagoo range now, it comes with a hole that you can pop out and put in a vent tube so that you can send all the nasty smells outside. Or you can connect it to the upcoming Mars Mate, which I'll have a review of as soon as I can get my hands on one. Now, before I go on to the printing and the print quality, I want to talk about the slicer, which it seems all Elegoo products now come with Voxel Dance Tango, something that six months ago or even three months ago, most of us had never even heard of. And this is typically a paid application, so you can't even try it for free, but when you get the printer, you can actually activate the software. I don't know if this is a one year license or anything. It didn't seem to tell me and nor does the Elegoo website, but you can actually activate this software using the hardware code of your printer. Now, the settings are easy enough to figure out. What's what in Cura and Lychee is pretty much the same in here and have similar sort of names. So if you're familiar with those applications, then you shouldn't be too put out by the settings in this one. And apparently this is a really good application for auto supports, but when I used it in my Mars 4 DLP video, I wasn't that impressed. It didn't blow me away. It seems okay. 
So instead of trying to support anything, I just took a pre-supported, well, several pre-supported models, including this reprint of the Matriarch by CA Sculpts, which is just a fantastic print. You need to check out CA Sculpts because they're amazing. But I do find this application to be a bit of a pain. Now it's pretty good when you want to auto arrange something to a degree because it will try and fit everything you've got loaded onto your build plate and that's absolutely fantastic. It does a good job at that. However in my case for some unexplained reason and I'm sure it's just a bug or a tweak or I've pressed something wrong, when it does auto arrange these it lifts everything a couple of millimeters from the build plate and unless you actually look at that base layer you might not even notice. And just moving stuff around is an absolute chore because you can't just grab the model, you've actually got to grab the control tool to the side of the model and then start dragging that around. And when you start getting a largely loaded build plate, it's hard to see that when it's off the side of the screen. And when you grab the little nodule in the middle of it to give it free movement, it actually moves it on the X axis, or sorry, the Z axis as well, whereas most other slicers are intelligent enough to freeze the Z axis and let you just move it around on X and Y. Several times this resulted in me moving the model above the build plate or through the build plate, which is not what you want at all. I do need to spend more time with this software outside of a review so I can actually see the benefits to it, but right now it doesn't seem like there are any. It's really clunky to use in just the basic principle of moving things around. But it does have one feature I like the look of, which is you can actually embed text of whatever font you choose onto the surface of a model. And this can be a flat surface, a curved surface, whatever you want to do. And I had a bit of a play with this in my previous review, but yeah, it's, it's fun. Like if you want to send a message to somebody on a print that you're sending them, then yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, when it comes to print quality, I'm really impressed. But as I said at the beginning of the video, anything with 35 microns or less resolution, you don't tend to see much of a benefit anyway. Now I am using a high resolution resin here with the Frozen 8K resin, but still, like, the difference between this and a much smaller pixel printer is going to be minimal. The CA Sculpts Matriarch came out incredibly well, although I dropped the bust originally and had to reprint another one so I could send it to the Warhammer girl so she can paint it and tell everyone I'm a great printer. You best do that, Rachel, because that, that's why you're getting it for free. Make, make sure you big me up and stuff. I didn't sculpt it, but I printed it. Just tell people I know what I'm doing, please. But anyway, even the Wolverine has come out just as good as I'd expect it. Yeah, it's a little bit softer than something with smaller resolution pixels, but when you've got paint on it, assuming you paint your models, are you even going to notice? Probably not. And for miniatures, I also printed out this Rider of Betrayal by Creature Caster, and that's part of their Dune Tribes range on my mini factory. I definitely recommend trying them out because they make some of the most detailed miniatures I have ever seen, and their supports are top as well. And one thing I've often got told off for in the comments is I do print things with a lot of detail and normally miniatures, but that tends to hide layer and voxel lines. So one thing I then went to print, and again, this is for the Warhammer girl, so make sure you promote me online. This Princess Mono Noak sculpt is this Princess Mono Noak sculpt is actually something from the Studio Ghibli range, which she was really interested in getting so she can paint it up and show it off on her channel. And as you can see from elements like the face and even on the wolf, you've got much larger flat surfaces. So this will give you an idea of just how smooth this printer is when you enable anti-aliasing and image blur. You can get some incredible prints, whether it's detailed or smooth on this printer. It is really good and it surprised me because I actually expected this to be a bit of a throwaway printer. But honestly, for a mid-range or even entry level at this price point, it's pretty damn good. But what do you think of the sculpts and how detailed they are? Let me know down in the comments. And if you don't want to take my word for it, I hope to get feedback from the likes of the Warhammer girl when she gets her Princess Mononiki sculpt. Once she's got that painted up, I will put a link to it in this video so you can see the result for yourself. But like in all my videos, you're probably asking the question, should I buy this printer? And most people do want my view and opinion on them. And the answer is, right now, at the point I make this video, I don't know. Now don't get me wrong, this is a really good value printer and releasing at this price point is incredible. 
especially for the detail you get. But like I said, it's more like a Mars 3 Max than a Mars 4 Max. So please, I hope you've watched this review and don't go buying this expecting a bigger printer than the Mars 4, but with equal quality. But when you look at this printer in isolation, even then, right now, Elegoo has significantly dropped the price of both the Saturn 8K and the Saturn 2, which are slightly larger printers at 10 inch build areas, but then also you've got 28.5 micron pixels too. Don't get me wrong, as I've said, you're not going to get a significant difference in that increased pixels I mentioned, but you are going to get a bit of a difference. And at only a few dollars more, it is probably worth spending the extra. So I suppose if now at the point of release, you're looking for a 10 inch printer, which I would value the size over the pixel quality, then go and buy something like the Saturn 8K or the Saturn 2 because you get more for around the same money. But assuming that those prices on the Saturn 8K and the Saturn 2 are only to ship off the excess stock while they move on to the Saturn 3 products and you're watching this video and they're no longer available, then yeah, this is probably the best entry level printer you can get as a good all rounder. It's got size, it's got high quality, it's got a carbon filter. It does the job. I, I don't think you need much more at entry level. It's fine. So that's it guys, thank you for watching my video. I hope this helped show you what this printer is and inform your buying choices. If it did, let me know down in the comments, even if you just enjoyed it, let me know down in the comments so you can spread this to more people through the YouTube algorithm. Comments for the comment god and all that. Don't forget you can support us on Patreon and keep helping us making content like this to help other people and inform their buying choices. And really, just signing up to Patreon, all that does is help us and it supports the channel and it gets your name up in the credits. I am hoping to do something soon by having things to give away, but stuff hasn't panned out the way I wanted it to, but I'm hoping to change that in the near future with a couple of other creators I'm working with. But anyway, you don't want to hear me waffle on. You've got as much as you wanted from this video. So I'm just going to say thanks for watching and until next time, see you guys. Fohammer out.